My name is Umesh Rasprasta. Uh, I've been in this field from last uh, 22, 23 years and working in a field of electrical in Nepal and uh, operating uh, charging stations and maintenance and also uh, having experience on uh, assembling and manufacturing the vehicle as well. Uh, <clears throat> basically, uh, if we have to come up uh, with the maintenance uh, of the electric vehicle, uh, we have to say that the, because of the very less parts and uh, like a, uh, in a conventional vehicle, fossil fuel vehicle, we have uh, lots of parts like the engines, the gearbox and everything. Uh, but uh, here in our electric vehicle, uh, as per our experience, and uh, there is a very few moving part. And uh, uh, basically it is uh, more easier for maintenance. Uh, but uh, we have to, again, do some analysis on the uh, another sector, the, which uh, right now there are more number of uh, modern electric vehicles are coming, where uh, uh, in which there is a lot, lot of uh, integration that has to be made, some software, softwares, and uh, battery management systems, uh, charging facilities. These all things are there, and uh, there are some uh, bottlenecks. Uh, in a maintenance uh, um, in an electric vehicle in Nepal uh, um, right now, uh, which is uh, basically uh, one of the very important facets where we have to concentrate uh, right now in perspective of Nepal. So uh, in, in case of a Nepal, uh, there are certain vehicles already plying here, like a two-wheeler, uh, scooters and uh, three-wheeler suffer tempos from long ago. It, it has been flying and there are, there are e-rickshaws, electric cars, and uh, now uh, electric buses as well. So uh, in case of uh, operation and maintenance, if we see that uh, uh, we, our vehicle, uh, basically, Two-wheeler, it has been almost uh, 10 years of experience in uh, the Nepal market. If we take a Sofa Tempo three-wheelers, it is already uh, 25 years, and it has given a very good uh, you know, uh, uh, return back. We, we, this, this is one of the milestone in the Nepal, where we can say that uh, the electric vehicle is a very much durable, uh, and it is one of the very sustainable mode of a transport system. And uh, thirdly, there is a, from six, seven years, we have a, a electric three-wheeler e-rickshaws as well. And uh, uh, recently from uh, seven, eight years, nine years, uh, we can see there are lots of a four-wheeler also. Initially, there was only a Reva, but from last two years, uh, Three years, we can see lots of uh, uh, big brands like uh, Hyundai and uh, um, Kia, and other uh, companies like uh, uh, MZ has also been introduced. And in case of electric buses, it has been just uh, introduced, and uh, almost uh, it is only uh, 2.5 years that. We, uh, uh, that, is, that, that has been operating right now. So uh, the experience of uh, uh, operation and maintenance of an electric vehicle uh, is like this in Nepal. Uh, so uh, uh, in case of uh, uh, Safa Tempo, we have been operating these in more than 25 years. And uh, the in case of uh, uh, battery management systems and uh, battery technology, all, in all these years, lots of things has been changed. And even right now, the software tempos also with the newer technology and the newer battery systems, uh, many things has been changed. And uh, uh, like uh, initially, we used to use uh, brass motors and uh, lead acid batteries. Now, uh, 
integrated system of uh, AC drive systems and uh, uh, your um, lithium lithium based battery has been has been started using in these suffer tempos and this has uh, from last 25 years uh, it is uh, supported as a public transport where uh, the electric vehicle these type of electric vehicle are uh, ran in the harsh condition uh, um, uh, almost 120 kilometers every day and this type of uh, electric vehicle also has created a uh, lots of a uh, job opportunity like in a charging station uh, to the mechanics uh, to the charging station operators and even a uh, drivers uh, and even uh, the one more important thing uh, is uh, in nepal in Safa Tempo, we have a lots of uh, ladies driver, female driver, who are driving as a driver owner themselves, and they have you know uh, lots of jo job opportunity has been you know created, and uh, as a this is a clean and zero emission transportation. Beside um, 20, 20, year, uh, 20 years uh, rule, the government has also provided these vehicle uh, 30 years and besides this i think uh, uh, there are lots of uh, workshops and uh, um, system uh, there's lots of systems for a uh, three wheeler electric rickshaw and uh, uh, two wheeler uh, scooters already but still there is uh, some challenges uh, still there like if we have to go into more public vehicle bigger buses and uh, uh, a bigger type of uh, infrastructure in a public transport system also and in even in uh, uh, private uh, electric vehicle also there is some hindrance in the policy uh, where you know even uh, uh, right now there are a charging station uh, for a charging station facility uh, um, government has indicated uh, you know, 500 places there will be a charging station, and even a NEA has already Nepal Electricity Authority has told there is a uh, they have already endorsed for a 50 charging station. But still, uh, on back in the mind, there is always a uh, some uh, uh, insecurity for the oper uh, operator of an electric vehicle that if they go to uh, from one city to another city, will they get a uh, uh, technical support or not, uh, uh, there could be, uh, if some wear and tear happen, if some accident happens, then they, can they get uh, spare parts on time or mechanics on time or uh, the technical support in time. So uh, in this aspect, uh, still, there are some developments that has to be made, like uh, there should be some uh, EV zones and other places where uh, there is a basic requirement uh, for you know making a people uh, into a comfort zone uh, to operate a EV. Basically, in a uh, if we see uh, if we compare with the conventional vehicle, yes, of course, as we said earlier, uh, um, there is only a battery motor and controllers and electric uh, propulsion system uh, there. Uh, in a mechanical term, yes, of course, uh, there is a very uh, few parts which are used uh, uh, for driving the vehicle. Uh, but still, uh, we have a, another uh, aspect, as I said, there is a charging facility is required, the charging maintenance, and then charging, uh, charging stations and infrastructure development. And uh, on beside that, uh, there is a requirement of a service station in all the areas uh, of uh, you know uh, urban cities and uh, in the middle of the you know transition routes uh, of different cities. So uh, we can see that uh, in electric systems also. Uh, we don't have uh, like for the charging facilities also uh, in 
we know that in the many of the places, still the distribution line system uh, is uh, still uh, not good. And uh, if we have to uh, get the high voltage electrical system for a charging and uh, these things, there is a, some, uh, uh, still the infrastructures has, uh, has to be developed. And in case of a battery pack, uh, also basically in case of a battery pack, we can see that uh, all the batteries that uh, that has been produced by uh, the big companies, uh, it is already uh, tested in uh, extreme conditions uh, like uh, extreme temperature, extreme vibration, short circuit to fire, humidity. So. Uh, in case of a battery, there is a, we can say that um, for a lithium battery, now the, this uh, developed battery, we have uh, lots of uh, safety measures already there. And uh, uh, in case of uh, batteries also, we need to have some uh, additional uh, brainstorming where uh, we can, in Nepal also, we can uh, assemble the batteries and manufacture the batteries. This type of uh, and uh, after cell service for uh, these batteries, uh, even uh, BMS fa facilities, software programming facilities, these these uh, things has to be you know done, and uh, like uh, uh, because of the battery, the EVs uh, basically does have a, uh, a very good center of gravity, and this is more uh, stable uh, vehicle. So in case of an EV, I think uh, the less uh, accident uh, are faced. So right now, uh, the emergency response for the electric uh, drive vehicles uh, is not significantly developed, uh, different from that of a conventional vehicle, actually. Uh, but still, uh, as I said earlier, there is a requirement of uh, EV zone concept in different part of uh, Nepal, uh, which is not yet developed. And uh, uh, right now, as we said that there is a uh, uh, lots of uh, new type of uh, vehicles uh, already in uh, Nepal, uh, which is uh, with a uh, very new softwares and uh, there are very less people, uh, there is very technicians who does know about these programming systems. And we even, I think, don't have a scanning devices and some uh, diagnosis system uh, in this vehicle. So these things has to be introduced in Nepal. Uh, most of the four-wheeler uh, vehicle means uh, passenger cars and new buses are just introduced. So uh, they have not performed it, and uh, we need to see uh, what type of a prob problem will be uh, in the future. And uh, for that also, I think uh, we need to have a technical manpower. Uh, there should be some engineering teams, like from a, a educational institute like TU, KU, and other in, uh, institutions. There should be. Uh, right now, uh, there are, with the KU and TU, there are there are come up in, uh, come uh, coming up with uh, new batches of engineers uh, for automobile uh, segment, and uh, I think they should now the academicians also should be concentrated in uh, providing a very good knowledge on electric vehicle sector because it is an emerging uh, area. Uh, in Nepal and in the world. So uh, as we are uh, one of the very important aspect for uh, maintenance is a human resource. So I think uh, now engineering uh, institutes, uh, the automobile engineers and even uh, simple technicians and mechanics has to be trained uh, to maintain the electric vehicle. So this is all that uh, some brief uh, about the electric vehicle maintenance system in Nepal. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.